afternoon, everybody. This is Jeremiah J. Man Monero with J Man Speaks. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Go like this. Yes? Man, look at I wish you guys could see what I see, all these thumbs going like this. It really starts off the meeting in a positive light. Uh, you are here for the next level virtual agent. You don't have to be uh, the first level virtual agent. If you didn't take the first class, that's okay. This will be just a little bit more in depth. Uh, the, we plan it like this specifically so that I think we launched the very first virtual agent class three weeks ago or so, three or four weeks, giving you some time to kind of try stuff out, see what works, see what didn't work, see what you need help with. Uh, so for those of you who are on, please, 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 I want you in the chat to type any questions you might have. I don't care how ridiculous you feel that it sounds. Uh, I'd rather work it out now with me while, while we're doing the Zoom call than you practicing with your clients or practicing with somebody else, right? There's no reason just because we're in a pandemic or we're quarantined doesn't mean that we can't have professional, high level, the very best service possible to exceed our clients' expectations. Do you agree? Yes. Yes. That's why you're all here today. So let's get started. Next level virtual agent. So to get started, um, and I kind of changed this the other day after May 4th. May the 4th be with you for my Star Wars fans. Um, <laughs> right. So what I want you to do is unlearn what you have learned in the past. We have so many agents and all the agents that I talk to that are struggling with this virtual agent transition. I hear from them like, we've always done it. This is the way it is. We don't usually erase all that you need to unlearn it because we're we're in a new world it's a whole new world and we have to do things very differently okay and so i need you to not focus on what the problems are we need to focus on solutions so i'm hearing some background noise let me just if you're not muted if you could mute yourself that'd be greatly appreciated I need all of you George, could you mute everybody for me, please? Cool. Yeah. Jeremy, you're muted. Oh, there we go. All right. Everybody hear me now? Yep. All right. Everybody else, unmute yourself. I mean, mute yourself. Mute yourself. Mute all. There we go. George, could you help me out here? And I'll continue on. All right, so I, I, if I'm a listing agent, how can I get showing scheduled virtually for my clients? If I'm a buyer's agent, how can I get those showings accomplished virtually and explaining it to the sellers and to the buyers? I think one of the biggest things that if you weren't on our uh, broadcast last week, last Friday, I think we had the nuts and bolts of virtual showings. I'll post that link in the chat so that you guys can see it in case you didn't. Uh, but the biggest, um, well, you can watch it and then we'll, we'll kind of go through it, but using showing time. So in many parts of the state, we have showing time as a value added benefit of your membership. You as an agent can use showing time uh, on your own. It doesn't have to be provided by the board, uh, but they have changed so many things in how they are doing their showings that you need to go in there and make sure that all of your listings that you have in there are set up properly and i'm going to kind of go through this in greater detail than i did in the last webinar in the, in the basic virtual agent but when i'm putting my listing in you can see here i have basically three different op options i have in-person and virtual appointments so if, if they are allowing in-person showings uh, which in our market really doesn't apply in all of new york uh, but if you have virtual appointments only or if it's in person with an agent showing it i guess you know that would be allowed you want to make sure that you do that uh, in the settings when you're setting up the showing or setting up the showing on showing time for your listing. This is if you're representing the seller. So you're going to need to go into your advanced options 
You could do it either from your desktop or from your mobile device, from the app, and say allowing showing agents to, okay, somebody else is sh sharing their screen now. One second, this is Charles Schwab, one person at a time. Continue. Okay, let me go back. <laughs> this is a good example, like stuff like this can happen during a Zoom. You just gotta keep going and uh, not worry about it because bad, not bad stuff, but challenges will always happen during a live stream or during a meeting like this. So go into your advanced options, make sure you have allowing agents to request showing uh, appointments online. Okay, that's gonna be there. Uh, normally you'd see this, allow showing agents to request appointments online. They've added this tab in the field so that when you're setting up that listing or when you input that listing, as agents go in to show it, you don't, you know, I have it in the private remarks, but you also wanna have it in your showing instructions as well. Uh, you can see here, when somebody then does request the appointment, you have all the showing instructions in there. Call if you need to cancel. Please provide uh, feedback. Join our meeting at it could be zoom.com, whatever the you know whatever it is, or you know you can set those instructions up ahead of time or have it so they that they text you uh, for the information or however you want to handle that. Uh, I'm going to give you all the different options uh, for the virtual showings here in a second. But you can see at the bottom it says call if you need to cancel. Please provide feedback. Please join our meeting. Uh, we will provide further instructions then. Okay. Uh, once they, you have a virtual showing, it's gonna confirm just like a normal showing would, okay? You can see here at the bottom, it says listing activity details. When you send that report to the seller where it has all of your showings that were ever um, completed on the property, uh, you have future virtual showing. Once it's completed, it'll say completed virtual showing. Um, you know, and any notes related to that and any feedback, uh, if you wanted to do a, a feedback request, just like you normally would. A little bit different, right? We can't say, well, the property smelled like this or looked like this necessarily, uh, but you can give feedback about condition, about the, the price, about um, location, even if, if the buyers do a drive-by on the property, all of that matters, okay? Um, so on, on the buyer's agent side, you can see here, uh, you have, you have options that didn't exist before. When we went in there, we would schedule a showing, it would say first showing, second showing, third showing, agent preview, appraisal, virtual showing now is one of the options. So you, you can declare what you want your default to be. You know, if you're in a market where we're only allowed to do virtual showings, or that's a recommendation of your brokerage or your, or your manager, you can make that your default so that when you go to request a showing, that's the automatic default that's gonna show up. Okay, and you can see here, uh, that appointment type has been added. Once it's received, you're gonna get the confirmation just like you normally would. They've actually added a little bit of a COVID-19 disclosure here. Due to concerns about COVID-19 and as a courtesy to all parties, please do not schedule or attend showings. If anyone in your party exhibits cold or flu-like symptoms or have been exposed to the virus. That's why like they have all these add-ons uh, that you may want to implement if you were doing it yourself, but they already have it. So why not pay, you know, if you don't have in your local board, I think it's, it might be $24.99 a month or something like that uh, to get this where you're at. Okay, your requested date and time virtual showing. Again, it's, it's gonna be just like a normal showing except it's gonna be done virtually and then any shared notes about the property. So in this example, let's say I'm showing Phillips uh, listing. I'm gonna send him a note saying, you see at the bottom there, can we FaceTime? If Phil only has an Android or doesn't have a, an Apple or iPhone type device, He's gonna say, no, we can't, but here's how we're gonna be doing uh, the virtual showing, okay? If you decide not to go the showing time route, uh, there's a, a couple different ways. You, they can call you, they can text you, they can email you, whatever, to do the showing, however you've been doing that for your entire career. You could then send them a link. I know agents that are sending them the link for the showing. I know other agents that are just putting it in the, in the private remarks saying, you know, the, the virtual link is, is posted, please use that for your showings. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that. I'd rather send the link so that at least you know when somebody has called to request the showing of the property because times are different, right? The first showing is happening online and the second showing for that matter, it, it all depends. So if you're gonna be sending the link, and I, I said this in the, the basic virtual agent class, uh, I use a, it's a free program bit.ly or bitly.com okay and you could see here i just i just did a screenshot of this this morning uh this is from a property 
I can track the number of clicks, right? The sources of where it came through. Uh, this particular property, this is for a 360 degree tour. Uh, 157 of our clicks came from email, SMS, or direct. 35 came from the matrix, which is our MLS. 32 clicks came from realtor.com. And then nine clicks came from other sources that aren't worth tracking. Uh, 229 of those clicks came from the United States. Two people are looking at my listing in Rochester from Austria, right? And then one person from Puerto Rico that might be one of, one of my relatives. But if you have properties and you want to demonstrate to your client, like here's the activity, here's what we're getting, Here's where our traffic is coming from. You know, maybe you're a CIPS designee. You can say, look at our international presence from the, the, you know, the websites that we go to. All of that can be tracked and that is for free, okay? You've come to a fork in the road. <laughs> I thought this was the best image I, I could to kind of show you that there's so many different ways for you guys to go. And I'm here just to educate you on all of your choices. There is no wrong way or right way. Our job is to really just educate our clients and have them make the, make the decision. Uh, too often I hear, I hear agents go, well, my seller isn't going to, you don't own sellers. We don't own sellers, we don't own buyers. Our job is to just educate them and say, you know, can we sell the property virtually? Yes, here's how we would handle it. We're gonna do virtual showings, we're gonna do 360 retours, we're gonna do Matterports, et cetera, okay? So here's the different options that I can see. You and the seller decide. Number one, first showing, is a virtual tour, right? So you call and then whether that's done through showing time or you send them the link. First showing is a, is a virtual tour. Second option, first showing is an agent guided virtual tour. Okay, what that means is I'm looking at, let's see here, Claire, I'm just calling out names as I see them. Uh, Claire wants to look at my listing. I send her the virtual tour link or I can say, Claire, we're gonna hop on a Zoom call I'll share the virtual tour with you, but as we go through, I wanna walk through and point out a couple things. See the difference? If I send you the tour and don't say anything, it's up to Claire to kind of walk through and go, oh, okay, all right, this looks nice. But if I'm walking through, I can stop and go, boom, you see these cabinets? These are 42 inch Cambria cabinets with the, uh, with the crown molding at the top. And we go over here, oh, see this floor? This was a imported Italian marble tile, whatever it is, okay? And go through the house and point out different things, just like I would if I was doing an in-person showing. Third option, first showing is live with seller or agent doing a guided virtual tour, okay? Um, and by that, I mean we schedule a Zoom call like we're doing here. You would schedule it, the showing is done that way. And then the seller's at their house, I'm at my house, buyer's agent's at his house, and the buyer's at theirs and they do a Zoom walkthrough. So they would go walk through the house and go, okay, over here. And so the seller is the eyes and ears to the property. Uh, we can, we are able to do agent, if the agent does the tour at the house uh, with the seller not being there, uh, the agent can be the eyes and ears, but that's also scheduled. For that example, you'd, you'd need to have two devices, right? I would have my, my laptop, like I have now, that's currently on Zoom, I would then have my device connected to Zoom through the Zoom mobile app. Okay, if you looked at the, all of the participants right now, I am on here twice. You can see my video, but then there's a second time that I'm on here and that's on my mobile device so that I can keep track of what's going on during the Zoom. See, that's actually, the, what you see is what I see on my phone so that I know what I'm sharing, what you're seeing. Um, I have it on my device, plus I could just share my screen, I could do any number of things and then walk through the house, okay? Fourth option, for your second showing, the second showing is live with the seller and the agent. And then your fifth option, the second showing is an un unaccompanied walkthrough, okay? We understand that we cannot be involved with that if this buyer and seller wanna get in touch and the seller has instructed you to do so or the buyer has instructed you to do so, your fiduciary duty to obey, uh, we can make that happen but we're not supposed to be facilitating that in any way, okay? I'm not gonna go too much into that because every single region of New York is interpreting that differently, so I'm not gonna give you recommendations, but it is an option. Okay, so here's some of the things you need to download, okay? And take a moment now as I can see you guys. Take a moment, take your phone out, and download some of these apps, not some of them, download all of them. Uh, the Zoom app you're gonna need on your mobile device. 
Okay, you're gonna also make sure that you have the Zoom desktop client. Uh, I am gonna suggest that you do the pro account upgrade. That's not necessarily a download, but you need to download some money so that you can pay for that. That's $14.99 a month or $150 per year. Uh, I don't see, I mean, things are gonna get better soon or hopefully in the next 30 to 60 days, but I think this is changing the way we do business. It's changing the way everybody's doing business. Everybody's so used to video. I think Zoom should be an important part of your business practice from now until forever, right? I mean, we're realizing how much we can do virtually. If I, if I would have been talking to you guys six months ago and been like, hey, you could do this via video, you'd be like, I don't like it. I don't like how I look, my face, all these things you'd have a problem with. But since you spend hundreds of hours now on Zooms of, any, of, of some way, shape, or form, uh, you're getting over yourselves, which is what my shirt says, get over yourself. Um, and, and you're using more video. So it makes sense to do the upgrade now before the prices increase because they've gone from, I think it's 10 million subscribers to like 200 million or something Zoom has. And with that kind of market share, they can raise prices increment, incrementally. Uh, you also have the Matterport for iPhone app, iPhone and iPad. I'm gonna show that later in, in the presentation. This is one of the newer upgrades uh, that Matterport has done where you don't have to have the expensive Matterport camera uh, and i'll show you some examples of what that looks like it's pretty cool and, and i know a lot of your markets you're like well we don't have somebody that can do matterport there's nobody that's deemed essential in my market that can do it there are some options for you okay and then the last one we're going to talk about is uh, google duo okay and i think that's uh, probably my favorite for mobile messaging mobile video chat besides and i didn't put this on there but it's a given facebook messenger is the last one you should have facebook messenger again super easy uh, today, like we didn't in the past, I'm going to have you kind of test all of these out so that you could see how easy it is. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay. Zoom, like I said, is $14.99 a month. You don't really necessarily have to do uh, beyond that. If you're a broker manager, maybe it makes sense for you to get one pro account for the office, depending on how much you use it, and then let all the agents use it. Uh, then you might run into the conflict of like, I want to do it at this time. I want to do it. And then, you know, you have scheduling conflicts. But if I was a broker, I would definitely have it to make sure that my agents are using it more often uh, so that they don't have the excuse. Right. And when you upgrade to the pro, you have the recording options and you also have unlimited recording options. Uh, the free version only allows 40 minutes. OK, so here we're going to kind of dive deeper into some Zoom tips and tricks. And if you're a presenter or an instructor, if you were on my Zoom like a pro, uh, some of this will be um, review for you. Okay. Um, I saw a question in there. Can we get a recording of the meeting? There will be a recording of this posted. I understand that I talk fast. I go through stuff quickly. Uh, there will definitely be a recorder, uh, recording of this. I'll send it to NYSAR. Uh, George, maybe you could comment in the, in the chat where it's going to be posted. I don't know where it goes exactly. I just send it to NYSAR and they put it someplace special. Uh, for you to access it. Okay, scheduling. Um, if you've been in any of my classes, I always recommend you use Google Calendar. Make sure that you integrate your Google Calendar with Zoom. Okay, this makes it super simple as you're on the go. Uh, this is where all of, where any, any challenges that you have with Zoom, typically it involves scheduling the meetings and or joining meetings because you put the wrong code or you share the wrong ID or you put the wrong password. You know, like for this, Today we have 124 participants, but we had 290 people that had registered for today. So that tells me some people couldn't get on. There's always gonna be some people that'll email me after like, I couldn't get on. It's not me, it's not my fault, it's not Zoom's fault, it was user error typically. So make it as easy as you can. If you see here, if I schedule this, when I do the integration on the left-hand side right above Hangout Meets, it says make it a Zoom meeting. I click that button, it automatically creates the meeting ID, the phone numbers, everything else you need. I add guests on the upper right-hand side, that then sends it to everybody. So if Sarah, I'm looking at Sarah, she's on, on my video right now of the five people, hey Sarah. So if Sarah's gonna show my listing, I'm gonna call Sarah and say, Sarah, so you're gonna be showing this property tomorrow at 10 o'clock, right? Yes. Okay, is it okay if you share your buyer's email address with me, I can add them as a guest to my calendar and everybody will get the showing information for the Zoom. If Sarah is not comfortable with that for whatever reason, I can then just add Sarah to it and then Sarah has it and then she can share it with her buyer, okay? But here's 
my advice. If you ask me for my buyer's email address, I'm going to make sure my buyer's comfortable with it, but why wouldn't I share it? If it helps to streamline the process, we have to have trust in real estate. Okay. Sarah has to know that me having her buyer's email address doesn't mean that I'm going to prospect her buyer after the fact. Okay. I'm just, you know, if, if there's paperwork that needs, needs to be shared, if there's zoom stuff that needs to be done, you know, that, that can all just streamline the process. All right. When you come into your zoom, your first time scheduling something, what I would go in and, and, and again, uh, you can't really break this. Okay. You, so you can go in and, and play with it and test it out. But what I would do is I would have, I would select different templates or make different templates. One would be a showing template. Another one would be a seller consultation template, a buyer consultation template, buyer presentation, and then a final walkthrough template. Okay. Those templates, all that means is it helps to streamline the process so that when I go in there and I hit topic, showing, description, showing at 123 Anywhere Street, use template showing, duration, I don't know, 30 minutes on average. It's not going to be a recurring meeting. And then I make sure that registration is required. Okay, the registration required, make sure that it's, if, if it's, if it all depends, if I'm doing a group showing, if I'm doing an individual showing, it makes sure that the other agent is registering and I'm getting their information and being sure who they are and the company that they work for. Um, it's an option. Again, you don't have to do that, um, but I'm going to show you if you do that, some of the additional options that are available. Okay. First thing you're going to see are the number of people that are registered. Uh, Cause towards the end, I'm going to talk about uh, how to do, how to do open houses and how you can do company open houses or an open house night, if you will. Uh, having people register would be just like having people register for an open house or register when they come in. Uh, you make sure you know who they are and then you can follow up with them and have a recording of, of the showing that, that, that happened that day. Uh, you can have, you know, you can have an option to send the email to the host and then you can close registration after the meeting date. Email settings. You can control, again, if they register, they get a preview email. Just like all of you who registered today, you received a preview meal, uh, meal, a preview email. Um, I can edit that and customize it. So I could say, hey, uh, George, you're registered to show my property 123 Anywhere Street. Here's a link for additional information or a link to the listing or anything else that I want to add in there, um, you could add that to the, to the, the preview uh, registration, the, the confirmation email. The second, the third tab here is branding. So, I mean, this is my class that I did zoom like a pro uh, it's a screenshot of it, but this could be uh, a nice banner uh, photo of the property that they're showing with your logo or just a banner of the property with additional information so that when they register, it's there just again, top of mind. Now you could do polls. Um, it's an option. Why would you do polls in, in, in a meeting? It all depends on how you're going to be using Zoom, right? It could be for a showing. It could be if I was doing a home buyer seminar, it could be any number of could be's. Okay, but you do have the capabilities to do polls, ask questions, and get people's opinion. And then the last one is live stream. Okay, so I can at any given time, uh, depending on what your capacity is for your Zoom account, the Zoom Pro starts you out at 100 participants. So if I, you know, we have 122 people on today. If I had a, a license for only 100, then what I would do is say, okay, first 100 to register for our open house evening uh, will be in on the Zoom. Everybody else, it will stream to Facebook, right? Think of Facebook as your overflow. Uh, but you have to let people know that you're probably not going to be monitoring that live stream. So if there's any comments there or anything else that's going on on, on on Facebook, you're not there to monitor it. If you're concerned with that, have a second person doing it because there's no way you can do this and also do Facebook at the same time. It's hard enough to do a Facebook Live and monitor comments to also have a Zoom going on at the same time. Really quite challenging. All right, profile pick and Google integration. So you're going to go into your profile and you see if I stop my video. Okay, I have my profile pic already set up. You want it to be a professional looking photo. Uh, you do have the opportunity to add branding in there, your company name, your brokerage name, all of that in the photo so that when you stop your video or before you start your video, there's something there more than your picture, right? Because if I look at uh, who hasn't done it, I can look at, at the screen here. And if you don't have your video on, I can see if there's no picture, that means you haven't up updated your profile yet uh, in your Zoom account. Again. 
Uh, all of this is just to make you look more professional and make you look like you know what you're doing. Uh, second part here is, like I said, the Zoom integration. That's all in your profile section uh, of your Zoom account. Zoom bombing. It's not as bad as you, as you sound. We had somebody at in, uh, one of my other webinars that said, I heard that the FBI said that we shouldn't use Zoom because, listen, uh, what had happened was a lot of people were, you know, so many people were using Zoom in a, not an amateur way, but a, a more social uh, social setting, meaning like, okay, hey, we're gonna have a happy hour today, Max. I send it over to Max, I send it to Karen, I send it to Kathleen and Mary and George and Leslie and Colette. And then I post it on my Facebook, hey, anybody wants to join a happy hour, here's my meeting ID. Well, that meeting ID, think of that like a personal address. That's like when you're in high school and you said, hey, my parents are out of town, I'm having a party. And you post that, and then all of a sudden you're wondering why there's 300 people at the house and there's stuff getting broken, okay? Your meeting ID is the same way. I would never post anything publicly or share it publicly because that, that's where the challenges are created. However, uh, with their last update, and this is where, um, in some of the parts of the state where the school districts had like forbidden people or teachers from using Zoom, a lot of them have lifted it. I think the Attorney General for New York just yesterday had lifted the restriction on it because they updated their security settings. They're satisfied with it. Where if I have an issue and I'm looking at Madeline, I don't know, I don't know you, Madeline, but maybe you're a troublemaker. You come in and you start like playing loud music, you share your screen, it's getting all kinds of crazy. I can kick Madeline out of the room, out of this Zoom, if you will. She cannot rejoin from that same IP address. I can then lock it down. See where it says lock meeting? That's like locking it down literally. No matter what, if you have a link, if you had registered beforehand, you can't come in, okay? I know some uh, real estate ed ed educators that are doing this where if you're not on time for class, they lock the door. You can't get in, they lock the meeting, okay? Uh, some of you did experience the waiting room. I wanted you, if you were here early, to experience that. Um, it's in this example, when we're doing like a, a showing type of, uh, scenario, it makes sense for you to enable the waiting room so that if Mary, Mary Valone, how you doing? If Mary's my seller, okay, I'm going to have the waiting room enabled. Mary joins. I see that she's waiting in the waiting room. I then let her in. I go, Mary, this is how it's going to go. I then educate her on the process. I go, you know, just like if we were showing the property in person, I'm going to ask you not to say anything, okay? I'm going to ask you to just be our eyes and ears as you walk through the house. I'm here at my house. I'm your agent. I'm the expert that you hired to be the go-between. Let me do the talking. So any questions that the buyer or the buyer's agent has, let me talk. I know that you want to talk and you're excited and you love your home. However, I am the expert negotiator that you hired to be here on your behalf. So let's, let's work with that. Okay. Normal conversation that you might have with a seller. What I would then do is say, all right, Colette's coming in with her buyer. They're in the waiting room, waiting. I can then let them in. So think of the waiting room like the wall between you and the other agents so that when you wanna have confidential conversations with your clients, you do that before you let them in. If you're gonna have a larger event where, you know, I knew we had 200 or so people registered for this webinar, I enabled it in the beginning and then I disabled it because I don't wanna to have to manually go in and let each person in. Go like this and go, okay, because people are late and it's annoying. Um, unless you have a co-host, right? George Garino from NYSAR, it's nice enough he was here early. He's like, Jay, if you need any help. I was like, cool, I made George a co-host. Now George can watch the participants and see if anybody's waiting in the waiting room, if you have a larger group like that. Okay, so enable it. Uh, and then make sure you customize it. I think the, the default says, welcome to Jeremiah's, Jay Mamonero's waiting room or something like that. So I changed it for some of the seminar stuff that I do for my this Zoom account. Welcome to the J-Man Seminars reception area. I feel like it, it's a little friendlier. I, you know, you can add a picture in there. And then whatever the, the meeting topic is will be posted on there. Uh, I wish that you could play music in there or do, you know, provide virtual coffee and some other stuff, but you can't, okay? But you can customize it a little bit. Um, I, I equate it to like if somebody's waiting, if you go to a bar and it's busy and it's three people deep, as long as the bartender goes to you and says, I'll be right with you. 
you're okay. You'll wait another 10 minutes, right? Well, it's the same thing with a reception. I like to call it a reception area instead of the waiting room because nobody wants to wait. Uh, dress for success, this goes without saying, but if I'm on a Zoom, I should be able to tell who the realtor is and who the clients are. Uh, same thing, right? In, in the real world, it's, it's one of my pet peeves when I show up to a listing, when we could show up to listings and see people. And I can't tell who the agent is and I can't tell who the clients are, right? I feel like we're realtors, we've got to step up our game. We're more professional than the rest. So dress for success, even when you're on a Zoom call. Um, I guess if you don't stand up, it just has to be from the waist up. It's pants, it's a pants optional world that we live in. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Virtual backgrounds, you can see here. I think I talked about this in the last one, I'm not sure. Uh, but I use canva.com to create virtual backgrounds. Okay, and, and I'll share my screen so you can see exactly where I do that in case you don't have it. Uh, some of you will not have the computing power or strong enough processor to do it without a green screen. Um, I'll give you options on, on where to get it. But you can go in there, go into Canva, you just type in Zoom virtual background. It's already templated for you, the correct dimensions. You can upload photos, you can upload like if you have the cityscape behind you or something nice, some nice photos that you took. You can add that in there, add your brand in there, and uh, just give it a more professional appearance because as I look, around at some of the videos like I don't we're all in real estate I don't want to be distracted by your background right if, if you have like all these things going on behind you I'm gonna be like what is that and then they're like I'm not paying attention be professional uh, make sure that you have a professional background even if it's virtual so you don't have to worry about cleaning up behind you just throw up the virtual background uh, do I look pretty <laughs> this is my favorite image of the day um, you know, because everybody, it's one of the things you're like, oh, I don't like how I look on video. Well, let me help you look as good as you can. Uh, lighting is a big part of it. We've talked about that in the past. You can see that dark photo there. But if I turn my light off, even that I have behind my computer, that can make the difference. Uh, but you want to enable the HD if you have, maybe some of you don't want to enable the HD because it, <laughs> it provides a higher definition of what you look like. Uh, but also touching up your appearance. If you check that button there, in the settings, it touches up your appearance. What it does exactly, I don't know, okay? It smooths out some wrinkles. Maybe I'm more wrinkly in real life than I am on Zoom right now, but it does touch it up. Uh, the other settings that I have that are important, I always display participant name on their videos. Uh, last thing you want is to call the other agent by the wrong name or, or somebody else. You know, I, I know many of you, but not by looking at you as a square amongst a number of squares, right? In person, I would, it's more likely for me to know your name. Uh, turn off video when joining a meeting. I turn off mine by default in the case I'm doing something weird when I join a meeting. Again, because you could be a participant or you could also be a host. So depending on maybe you're not ready yet, that's just my default. Um, always show a video preview dialogue when joining a meeting. And then spotlight my video when speaking. So if you're the host, spotlight video is one of the most important features I want you to remember. If you're the host and you spotlight video, that means if I, if I stop sharing right now and I have a conversation with any of you and it's in speaker mode, there's speaker mode and there's gallery view, right? Spotlighting my video will be sure that it's my video that's shown and nobody else's. So if the seller's doing the walkthrough of the property, it's a seller guided walkthrough via Zoom, make sure you spotlight their video. So all you would do is go to them as a participant, right? If you go to your participants now, you have the little hamburger bar, the three squares. You click that and then you would spotlight that video. Okay, that makes it so that they can, um, if you wanted to temporarily do it, you could pin the video, which is anybody that's part of it. And then you could also rename uh, somebody to do that. Okay, lighting, like I said, is, is very important. Make sure that you have good lighting. Um, you can go on to amazon.com. You don't have to get a huge light like this, uh, but there's, there's ring lights for under 30 bucks. You just put it behind your computer, they're hardwired makes all the difference. Okay, so let's go into, I'm gonna kind of stop sharing here for a second. Check out what we have in the chat. Any questions so far? Would you believe what time frame the sellers and buyers feel comfortable buying your most valuable asset? Great question, Philip, maybe one of the buyers. Any questions about Zoom? I, I can't read through this whole chat uh, that George has been curating for me. Any questions specifically about Zoom right now? 
right yeah. in the chat. Sylvia? So, yeah. yeah. Uh, why me. two devices when I do a Zoom tour at a house? Why do I need the laptop and the phone? Well, because the laptop is going to, like right now, if you're not on, are you on gallery view? If you're not mm -hmm. on gallery view where you could see everybody, all of you who are watching, right. click your upper right and you can see everybody. So if I have multiple people, if this was a broker's open or an open house or a group showing even, right? Because you could still do group showings this way. I can't or I'm not going to carry my laptop around. So having my second device, if I go like this and I start my video, hold on. So some of you, if you look at my other square, there should be another square with my face in it. I can walk through the property. Hold on. Can you see that? Ah, uh, yes, I think I did. Okay, so I'm at my office. If I walk down the hallway here and said, oh, Sylvia, look at this lovely dark hallway. Yeah, yeah. Don't you okay. love it? And as I walk through, I come back over here and I go, oh man, look at, there's the Monero team's headquarters. That's fantastic. And I come back over here and I go, hey, okay, see you later. I'm gonna stop my video. Got it, okay. okay so you could see how like if I was showing the house, that's exactly how I would do it. And because I have these AirPods on, you should still hear me because they're wireless. As long as I don't, as long as I'm not walking too far away from my laptop. And the other thing to stop from uh, the echo effect, because you'll get sound on your computer and you'll get sound on your device. You're gonna not join audio on your mobile device, right? Because if not, I'd have sound coming from my, my speakers on my computer and then sound coming from my phone and that will create a crazy echo effect that will drive everybody bananas. Thanks. Yep. Um, I'm use for images. Using image and ability for branding. All right, let me just, I'm gonna share my screen quickly so that you guys can see what I see as, as a host with a pro account. One second. Desktop. Okay, so you should all see your, you see the gallery now? Go like this. Okay. So when I come in here, if I wanted to do a virtual background, here's where all of my settings are. Um, you could actually have more than one camera. Why you would use that? I don't know, it could be a wireless camera, it could be a camera outside. I mean, get creative as far as what you want to do. Like if I go to the second camera that I have set up, you can see that's a second camera in my office. Okay, it's a different view. Um, but I'm gonna go back to the FaceTime HD camera. So to add the virtual background, I'm gonna go here, choose virtual background. Um, if you wanna add them, you go to Canva, you create it. Then you just go add image or video. That's it, add image. I pick an image, I'm not gonna do that. But that's how you would do it. So these are all ones that I have stored. I could do a fishy one like this. Okay, I have all, I have the jungle, I have the beach. I feel like those are a little bit more distracting, but you could see how without a green screen, it's a little bit more like I disappear into the background. That's why I like, this is probably one of my favorites, the coffee bistro or this one. Uh, gives me the best, like I'm separated from the background. And if you notice, you may not notice because of, I do this a lot, but as I'm talking, I'm more here in front of my body. I don't go like this too much like I normally would because my hands disappear. And if I wanna show you my phone or my device, I'm doing it in front of my face because if I go like this, it disappears. Okay, that's not having a green screen. If I had a green screen, and for those of you who are disappearing in your background, it's because you don't have a green screen. Uh, if you do add that, it's gonna really create, and lighting is important, but it's, the light will shine on me, and then there's, it's a little bit darker on the green screen behind me, and the computer can then separate from the two to give you a really nice professional appearance, okay? Because if you're gonna be doing this, again, you're on the next level virtual agent, right? It's, it's, I want you to go to the next level and be as professional as you can. But that's as simple as just add your image there, uh, there's a ton of other options which we won't go into here, uh, but I guess what I could, 
what I wanted to show you some other stuff here. Um, if I was going to share with you a video, so let me do this. So if I go like this, if I'm sharing anything that has sound in it, so if you're if you're sharing, if your virtual tour has sound or you have some uh, points of interest in the area, make sure that when you share it, you share computer sound and optimize the screen share for video clip. If not, when you share it, you're gonna be going, and there's gonna be no sound whatsoever. You'll be only, the only one that can hear it, okay? Um, and then if you're gonna do a presentation, like a listening presentation, buyer presentation, you're doing that via PowerPoint, um, you can do it two ways. You can do it with a share the desktop feature. Um, it's a little weird because then they can see your entire screen just like you can right now. But I'm gonna, if I go here, I can share just my PowerPoint. So now you should see just the PowerPoint. You see the square on the right-hand side um, or the, the gallery view of people on the right-hand side. You see how you have the four options. There's a dash. There should be one square. There should be like two bars. And then there's like nine squares. If you click the nine squares at the upper right, and then there's a the lower left hand corner you can drag that out so you can see more than the four people if I, you drag that out to the down and to the left you can see more people that way uh, for me it's it's i need to see the people so seeing more people is better so i can get reactions and understand what's going on okay recording and what i mean by recording is recording the showing so or the the open house or the final walkthrough. Uh, I think I gave this example in another webinar, but I had a, a final walkthrough that took one hour, one hour of my life that I could never get back, but it was to the buyer's benefit, right? The seller was at the property. They had they were already moved out. They were sleeping on an air bed in the one bedroom and we set up the Zoom, the listing agent, I was representing the buyer and, and the buyers, buyers are at their house, I'm at my house listing agent wasn't even there and the seller was at, at the house. Uh, we did a final walkthrough. It took an hour. Seller was not very tech savvy. Okay. In the beginning, I had to coach him a few minutes on how to get the camera from facing him to facing the other direction. Okay. He's going, how do I do this? I can't, it's facing me. Do you want me to turn around? Like he had this big iPad and I'm like, all right, we got through that. But that could have been avoided had the listing agent prepared the seller with what what and how it was gonna go down, right? You could do a tutorial video. And that's why it's important for you to download the Zoom app so that if, if your client is on the Zoom app, you know that if there's more than one person on there, if there's up to four people, they have to scroll to the right. There's only four people that are shown at a time in the gallery view. So they have to be able to scroll to the right and then you have to tell them in the upper left-hand corner, they're gonna click that to make the camera view go from facing them to facing the other direction. Okay, these are all parts of what you need to know. But at the end of that, I, you know, I, I let the buyers know, like, isn't it great? They're like, what do you mean? I have, I have never done a final walkthrough that took so much time. <laughs> like, really? I'm like, yeah, this is the most comprehensive final walkthrough I've ever done. Okay. And we recorded it and I'll send you the video. Okay. So that the seller who's telling them about how the hot tub gets prepared in the spring, what, how to close the pool in the winter time, all the different intricacies of the house, all the switches and what they do. I have that all recorded. It's just another value-added benefit of how we provide better service to the mastery of today's technology. Okay, it's flipping it rather than going, oh, I wish we could do this in person. It kind of sucks that we have to do it via video. I'm like, isn't it great? Oh man, we have, we're gonna do a walkthrough with video and we can record it for you. Okay, so you have the option whether to record it in the cloud or record it locally. Um, and this is with your pro account. I'm gonna suggest that you record it in the cloud because within the cloud, you can record it two ways. Okay, we have Zoom prepared two ways today. Uh, the first is gonna be the speaker view will get recorded. The second way is the gallery view will be recorded. So that's where it's important, like play with this, uh, either get colleagues in your office or your family members, get everybody on a Zoom, record it, and then do the different options. So you could see the difference that when you spotlight somebody, how it, it, it only records that person, rather than like if me and Lori and Antonia and Nestor are on, if we were all talking, it would keep going me, Lori, Antonia, Nestor, Nestor, Jeremiah, and it's annoying, right? If it's just one person that's doing the walkthrough. Uh, or if somebody has a cough or somebody has a dog that's barking, it'll keep going to that camera and that'll get recorded. And just really affects the flow of, of the video. Um, 
Now, breakout rooms. Typically, you know, I thought, what's a creative way that you could use breakout rooms in real estate? And if if the buyer and the buyer's agent are looking at my property, and uh, Jennifer Stevens, the buyer's agent, she's like, you know, Jay, can I? I just need to talk to my buyer for a little bit. No problem, Jen. I'll put you in your own breakout room. That's just like a private room that nobody else can listen to. It's not recorded. I don't know anything else that's going on. Okay, it's meant for educational purposes where if I was doing like a group, kind of a group breakout session, I could use it for that, but it's also a private room. So if they wanted to talk and then come back and say, okay, Jay, we had a couple questions. Okay, just, just be creative. Think outside the box. Think about how you can use this stuff to really do things differently. Okay, skillful, skillful, this is a tongue twister. Skillful screen sharing is caring. Uh, and, and what I mean by that, I've, now I've logged well over 100 hours on Zoom by itself. And still one of the things that it's not, and it's part of the, the way the interface is with Zoom, it's not that smooth when I want to go from a PowerPoint and then go to Chrome and then go back to a PowerPoint. It's not that smooth, but it's something that does, does take some practice. So I, I showed you this with the desktop to be sure that you should share computer sound, optimize screen share for video clip, but I want to show you the whiteboard really fast. And the whiteboard is a feature that could be used. You know, if I was doing a listing presentation, I'm talking to the seller, doing a virtual consultation, and normally I would have my phone out and I would be taking notes with Google Keep, but it's a virtual, a virtual appointment. So what I would do is I could, I'll do this, and this is how you can do a new share or you can stop the share and then start sharing again. That means if I stopped it, you'd see me talking in the middle full screen and then the share. But if I do new share, click that and I go whiteboard. I hit me to share this. One second, I gotta bring the whiteboard to the front. New share, whiteboard. Okay, that's what it would look like. Can you see it? Okay, seeing it okay? Keeps coming back. But as I went through, if I had the whiteboard like this, you could text it or, let me give you another way I can do this. I'm gonna stop sharing this for a second. It feels on my phone, I could go share, I could go share whiteboard and I could go, oh, New kitchen, new kitchen. And I'm using my fat thumb to write, but if I had a stylus, I could write, you know, if this was an iPad, new kitchen, bath, I'm gonna do a happy face, okay? That's all on my mobile device. Just another reason why, or how you can use, clear my drawing. And you wanna stop the share. Okay, so that's the whiteboard feature that could be done with text, that could be done with handwriting, that could be done on your mobile device, as well as your tablet. Okay. Uh, music or computer sound, uh, if you, some of you were tuned in early, if I wanted to just share music, it's in the advanced features of the sharing. I don't have to share my screen and share music. I could share music or sound by itself. And then I could also share content from the second camera, uh, like I showed you briefly. And if I did this, okay, share. I'm gonna go desktop. Again, you should see my screen, right? Yes. Okay, if I go share, see it says basic. Any tabs that I have open, iPhone, iPad via AirPlay, iPhone, iPad via cable, but you go advanced, so the music or computer sound, but content from a second camera, I hit share. There's my second camera. Hello, my darling. Hello, my sweetheart. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing. But that's my second camera. Obviously, you may not need this, but this is next level virtual agent. So that's what I'm here for. And I go back to the PowerPoint and we do that. It's really not, but anyways. You're having uh, question, question, Irene, or you just accidentally unmuted yourself? Whoop. Okay, I got you. 
<laughs> All right, so uh, Facebook Messenger, again, make sure that you have this downloaded. If you didn't hear yet, they're gonna be adding a, um, you could always do group messenger on the phone, but they're actually gonna be adding a messenger meetings, if you will. Uh, it was just announced uh, within the last 10 days or so. Here's what it would look like. There's something new in Messenger. Introducing group video chat. It's a great way to get together whenever for whatever. So say you want to ring in the new year with friends from far away. Yeah, no, no actually. matter where they are, friends can join. Never mind that. I shared the wrong video. Darn it. That's the group video chat, but the meetings is coming soon. Uh, it's it's going to be very similar to Zoom. It'll have the squares just like you see this. Uh, Facebook is really great at creating. You know, if they're losing market share to anybody, they just copy it and then they add it to Facebook, right? They want you to be able to be on Facebook all the time, all day, every day without having to leave. Um, and then the last option, Google Duo. This is my favorite uh, just because it's mobile to mobile and it's cross-platform. Okay, if you're not using Facebook Messenger, Google Duo is the other option. It used to only be one-to-one -one and now it's one to 12, uh, up to 12 people. So take the time right now, I'll wait. Take your phone out and download Google Duo. If you have a newer Android, you should already have it. Okay. I'll wait for you to do it. Okay, and then the last thing I wanna talk about is virtual uh, open houses, uh, public and broker opens. But from, from a different perspective, you know, I, I think it makes a lot of sense. There's power in numbers. So if you have other agents that wanted, you know, those of you who have ever done a broker's open, right, you've said, okay, hey, Sylvia, you have a, a, a listing near mine. Why don't we partner up and do a broker open train, if you will? Well, guess what? You could do the same thing virtually, right? Because the power of numbers, we can all market that together and say, hey, Thursday at 6 p.m., we're gonna have a virtual broker open or virtual open house, depending on what you wanna do. And you can show all of these properties on the train or the caravan, or however you used to do it in person, you could do it now um, online. So you have the open house event feature. We talked about that in the past, just creating the event. And then this is where you're gonna kind of put all of your details. So again, with any event, you can have more than one promoter, more than one host. Uh, it makes sense to, like I said, power in numbers. Uh, Matterport. This is the, the 3D capture app for iPhone. It's in beta mode right now. I'm gonna show you some examples here in a second, uh, but this is hot off the press. You don't need the $3,000 camera. Uh, I'm a little bit jelly because I have an Android, uh, but you, it, you can use it with your iPad. I haven't tried it yet, uh, but that's what they said. So let me just show you what that looks like. I'm gonna go to Chrome. And again, if you were in the basic virtual agent, you remember we I kind of showed you the Matterport already, but here is an example of one. This was taken completely with an iPhone. Let me just bring this over to the side, bring this over. Okay, so all of these points are details about the property. So let me just, oh, what is this? Let's click on here. Sub-Zero built-in refrigerator, excellent. Belt top built-in cabinet system. What is this oven here? Oh, it's a Melee built-in oven. Oh, the strut console table. Okay, so they've added all these points here and this was completely done with an iPhone. It's pretty slick. Okay, and I would imagine like many things that are real estate related, they release it to iPhone first, and then uh, it should come to Android after it becomes popular. You can view the floor plan. Okay. Let me share and go back over there. Okay, so that it's totally done with your iPhone. That's an app. Make sure that you download that, uh, but you can see the difference. Now, the other programs, BeLive, Restream.io, and then StreamYard. I showed you BeLive.tv before. Let me just show you, go back to Chrome, I guess, and show you the Restream.io and what that looks like. Okay, everybody see my screen? Yes? Go like this? 
Okay, so this is Restream.io. Uh, I use this, uh, if any of you follow me and I do live stream Sundays with my son, uh, he's nine years old. This is his preferred platform because he can live stream to YouTube and Facebook at the same time um, for the free version. And I'm like, I'm not gonna pay for the upgrade for you, son. You could pay for it out of your allowance if you wanted to. Uh, but he's like, no, it's fine. Uh, with the free version, you can do it from one account. So I, I stream on my profile and then I stream on, on YouTube at the same time. It says here that you could do LinkedIn. I have it checked. It never works. It's a little bit glitchy. Maybe you can get it work, get it working, but you just go to restream.io. It's free to create an account. And then I would just come in here and you go in and you kind of change, add the channel, uh, finish webcam. One second, come over here. And you have to go into each one. It's gonna be a little bit laggy cause I'm, okay, but there's my camera accessing your camera and then you go into each one and put because it's going to create the description for your live stream yeah it's not going to allow me to do it because i'm i'm going i'm live right now but it's really easy again you can't break it it's free this is free this is free so just try it it's just another way for you to kind of get more exposure and use you know use live video in a different way it's going to say allow allow but i'll go back over here. One second. All right. So I, I'm going to open it up for questions now because we're getting close to the time and I want to leave enough questions, enough time for questions. So what do we have, George? I know there's, I see it blowing up in the corner here, but I haven't been paying attention. Can we get this recorded? <laughs> Yes, you absolutely can get the recording. Uh, George, if you, where would it yeah, be posted? I will put it right in there now. Okay. So Sarah says, I did a listing prep consult through Facebook Messenger. Seller didn't even know it was something we could do, LOL. She said she enjoyed it and was very thankful. Uh, so Sarah, you wanna talk a little bit about it? Did you just kind of, they were already messaging you through Facebook and then you just click the video button? Feel free to unmute yourself and share that. Now? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, okay. So actually it was the, I was only able to stay for the first half of your class last week, but I had been using um, a couple other apps and I didn't even think about Facebook Messenger chat until you brought it up in the last meeting. So I was talking to a client and she kept saying, I really wish you could just come over. Will you just come over? I won't tell anybody. And I was like, no. <laughs> um, so I asked her, I said, do you have Facebook? And she said, yes, I've been now, I mind you, I've been talking to the seller for over a year. Every month I talk to her and every month they're not ready. They're finally actively doing stuff in the house, which is I think why she wanted me to come over. So I said, well, do you ha have you ever used the messenger in your Facebook? And she said her, her kids do it sometimes. And I said, well, I'll walk it through you, but there's a camera. You'll be able to see me and I'll be able to see you and we can walk through the house together. And she didn't even know that was possible. I had to do the same thing, teach her how to push the button so it flips the camera around. <laughs> right. But it worked, it worked really, really well. And she was able to actually show me areas of the house that she was concerned about. I was able to notice like the mismatch, brand new doors are great, but brand new doors with white casing and the whole rest of the house has brown molding. So I was able to catch that, never would have thought to ask that question if it was all just regular communication. So, right. and she was familiar and comfortable with Facebook. I had mentioned like Zoom and stuff earlier and she was like, we'll just wait. And I didn't want to wait any longer. So the Facebook was something that she was comfortable with. So it was really, I mean, it was a great, I'm so glad you said that at the last meeting because I never would have thought of it. Well, thank you so You're much welcome. for the, wait, something I said actually worked. Everybody yes, write that down. Just it a worked. check mark in there. I just um, never and, done it for work. Everything had been Zoom. So it was, you know, outside the box. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for sharing. And it's good because people don't realize like I'm so used to using video now. I did video a lot, but now it's like I spend, I don't know, eight hours a day on video that it's weird if somebody calls me. Like they call me on the phone. I'm like, will you, 
hold on. And I'll hang up and then I'll call him with messenger and I'll use video. Like, I want to see your face. I want to see people. I'm, I'm an ADHD with, uh, with, you know, extrovert with, and I can't see people. So I need, I need this video. Um, Antonio has a question. What did I say about Google duo? So Google duo, duo is my, my go-to for mobile to mobile video conferencing. Okay. You download the app. Uh, it's going to tell you who else has duo. That's already your contact. But if you're working with somebody who doesn't you you know, you just tell them download it and they don't really need to do anything else. They don't need to have a Gmail account. They don't need to click on a link, right? Just like Sarah just shared, like people don't realize if it's easy, it's so much easier not to click a link, not to have to go to a website, not to have to create an account with something. And so like Zoom is good if they're using it for work and they're somewhat tech savvy and they're a little millennial, they can get it. But if, if they're tech challenge, I would say Google Duo or Facebook Messenger is, is one of your better options. Uh, Sue Larson has a question. What is the difference between Facebook Messenger and Google Duo? So two different platforms. Uh, Facebook Messenger is the messaging platform for Facebook. If you had somebody that said, I don't do that Facebook stuff, Google Duo is your answer, right? They're independent, different, they're just different ways. Uh, my job as a tech instructor is to give you a number of tools for your toolbox, and then you can kind of pick and choose what might work. Okay. Um, so George posted the link of where the webinar recordings can be, can be found. Where in Facebook do you go to get the video so you can be seen? Um, it's already there, Antonia. If you message somebody in Facebook right now, Facebook Messenger, you should see a little video camera. Okay. If I go, come over here and I go like this, I'm going to share my screen. Start now. Okay, I'm sharing my screen, which is always dangerous, but that doesn't matter. Okay, and if I have Maria, I just did a, uh, a webinar with this. So you see the video at the top? If I click that video, I'm video calling her right now. Let me hang up before she answers. That's it, it's that simple. Stop share, there we go. Okay, that's it. Uh, so Jeremiah? she used, yes. Hi, did you answer which metaphor we should use? I don't see your answer, capture or metaphor 3D. Uh, metaphor 3D okay. is, is what you wanna use. Um, there's also, yeah, that's the one you wanna use. Mm -hmm. So I'm an Android user. I'm anxious to grab my iPad because I have three iPads I have an Android phone, I have a MacBook computer, and then I have a Windows desktop. So I have everything. Um, so I'm gonna try it with my iPad to see how, see how it works. But I mean, that's what was one of the biggest barriers for most folks is that you don't have a Matterport person in your area or you don't have a Matterport person that's deemed essential or hasn't deemed themselves essential with, with um, ESD yet. And so they didn't have an option unless you have somebody who's doing 360 degree tours and you could do that yourself with a number of different apps as well. Uh, I'll put it in here, there's a, there's a, a camera called Rico, R-I-C-O-H, R-I-C-O-H. Um, I think it's Rico.com. Again, I'm not an affiliate of them, I just know the options. You can get the camera, it's a 360 degree multi-lens camera, lens here, lens here. It scans the room and it's much cheaper. Uh, you can get your 360 degree. Not gonna be to the level of Matterport necessarily, but hey, we got to kind of uh, adapt and overcome, you know, what our different options are. Uh, great webinar, so you see Messenger. So Irene says, so she used Messenger just to communicate, correct? Not to do a presentation? Yeah, yeah, but you could. So any, with Meet, with Hangouts, uh, with Messenger, you can share a screen as well. And so and with Zoom, right? Just like I did my presentation with you guys sharing my PowerPoint, you could do the same thing. So if you have a listening presentation, you have a buyer presentation, you have a, um, a home buying workshop, you have a home selling workshop, you get an investor workshop, all of these things you can just share, share your screen with whatever presentation you have. Do, do, do. Feel free to unmute yourself as well so I don't have to read. You know, I don't like to read, I like to listen. Uh, where can you get a cardboard viewer to slip your iPhone into the Matterport app? Uh, Philip's question, that's a great question, Philip, with Matterport, um, it's Google Cardboard. So if you Google Google Cardboard, you should be able to find it or there's a Samsung 
uh, if you have a Samsung device, I guess you said iPhone, um, but there's a Samsung VR, it, it's also the same thing. So uh, what Philip is saying with that Matterport, I could take the Google Cardboard, put my phone in it, and now it'll become virtual reality. Okay, and I think you know that could be the virtual showing of the future where you have these VR goggles in the office. I think that would be like the new awesomeness. Hey, come to the office, we'll do some virtual showings. They come in, they slip on the goggles, I slip on mine, I slip on, they're called Oculus Rift, like hand controllers, and we'd be in a virtual world. I go, oh, here we are for our first showing, and it, it would be totally virtual, and we'd just be in the office sitting there. Mm -hmm. All right, all webinar, I missed the BeLive part. Sue said, I missed the BeLive.tv part. Did people like it? How is it different from Facebook Live? Uh, so, Sue, I can tell you this. I've done over 200 broadcasts using BeLive.tv. Why I love it is that I can schedule it up to seven days in advance. The branding opportunities are much greater. Um, I can have on-screen comments, people comment on it. I can post stuff on screen. I can have a ticker come across the bottom. Um, and I'm not self-promoting, but if you go to my Facebook page, J Man Speaks, I have a ton of Ed Talks that I did. They're all free, but you can see the difference, right? There'll be a frame wrapped around it. When somebody comments or has a good nugget, I can bring that on screen. So much more capabilities than just Facebook Live. But if it was nothing else, it's scheduling up to seven days in advance, right? Because that gives you enough, uh, enough time to market things, right? Just like you would an open house, a broker's open, a showing. Um, I, you know, and I think, you know, the best way for, me, for you to do these, if you're going to be doing live showings, if you're going to have the seller do it, do it in a group, forming, group showing format so that I might say, okay, seller, uh, we're going to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. We'll have group showings uh, from six to seven so that you, they don't have to be on call 24 hours a day when somebody would be able to see it. I think people are understanding just like if you're going to do that, you do your group showings, then you have um, a delayed negotiation so that after you have these group showings, you then say, okay, uh, we're going to review all offers on Monday by this time. So then everybody feels like they got a fair, uh, fair opportunity to see the property. And then they have, you know, fair opportunity to make an offer as well. Um, Adderport app, excellent, excellent. Jay Mann, it's Priscilla. Uh, Maria has a question about whether or not you wear makeup for your presentations and how important that is. Yeah, so I actually have a hair and makeup squad here in the studio. And between webinars, I get my hair did. And my, no, I don't. Uh, but... My hair is done because my mom's a hairdresser, and if I didn't, my mama wouldn't be proud. But that being said, I do a ton of videos. If you follow me, if I do them early in the morning, it looks like I got electrocuted. My hair's like this. I'm all sweaty. It's after I run. I don't care. It's more important, especially if you're just speaking to clients. They know what you look like. They've accepted you for all of your beauty or not, okay? So don't worry about it. They're still going to work with you anyways. Um, I, I, and I love how many people, and it really it wasn't a requirement, but look at how many people have their videos turned on during this webinar, where six months ago, I think it would have been probably half the amount of people. Well, you shamed us into it. <laughs> My um, pleasure. One more question. Sue Larson wants to know how far in advance do you um, advertise a virtual open house? Well, the, the maximum that you can do it is seven days uh, with the BeLive.tv. I, I, I would recommend seven days, you know, because just like anything, the more time that you have, the more that you can market it. And that can be marketed in so many different ways. You can email blast it. You know, once it's scheduled, you have a link. So that link can be shared via email, via text message, via Facebook Messenger. You know, you, you could have the town crier, you could have Pony Express, smoke signals, whatever it is. Uh, you can you can promote it uh, where it used to be I went live and if you were busy at the time you're gonna miss it so uh, you know use it use the time to your advantage thanks Priscilla uh, George green screen you purchase the green screen and place it in the back here creates a better virtual crap like a TV weatherman uses yep thanks George thank you George if you're having trouble uh, Amazon has a lot of green screens available they're on back order everywhere, but you should be able to find one. I ordered one last week. Um, if you didn't see it, I'm going to have a whole studio set up here in my office with the green screen, with the, 
with this with everything okay but you could go to your local fabric store and and get either like a felt background or the actual fabric is called muslin m-u-s-l-i-n is what they use if you just went to the fabric store and found the lime green fabric that was not shiny and you bought that you'd be fine and just took some staples and stapled it to the wall you'd be good to go it's even cheaper if you went to the paint store and got lime green paint which is probably on sale and found a little spot where you're going to do most of your broadcasts just paint that little section of the wall now you have your home studio right so that's the spot where you're going to be doing it um, i think you should have a dedicated area in the house some of us are realizing your home office is not idea ideal for video because the lighting's not right and I, if i look at some of you the lighting isn't right like you i know where your window is because half your face you look like the good guy the bad guy half your face is lit up here like colette you have a window to that side of you right yep i can see that sylvia as well she has a window to her right i want to say it is or maybe it's her left depending on how it's flipped the image okay um is this the settings in zoom you're explaining yes I'm on my tablet, not my iPhone. Fill up. Vacation homes are sold by video VT, but hopefully Governor C will allow us out in phase two. Uh, Phil, you want to kind of expand on that and then I could maybe comment on it? There you go. Mm, can't hear you. You're yeah. unmuted, but yeah, okay, there you go. Yep. No, basically, if we get to go out, I think it'll be easier to do the virtual tours, you know, without any difficulties or less difficulties. Mm -hmm. Try to do it the way we're doing it now. It's a, a little bit challenging, but I, I'm always wondering if people are used to v physically seeing the home, how they're going to adapt to purchasing. I know vacations home, vacation homes have done that way, but I'm yeah. just wondering how long will the adapt adaptation period be if this continues to be the way it is and people are either afraid to let us in or the purchasers don't want to go out. You have to have two willing parties. What yeah. do you think is so, I think uh, a big part of that, there's going to be some generational differences, right? right. Uh, the millennial buyer, we're used to pushing a button and getting things. And we're used to buying things online. That's why you see companies like uh, Carvana, right? Who would have thought that you could order a car online and then go to a car vending machine and pick it up <laughs> or have them drop it off in front of your house, right? Some of you, you're like, there's no way I'd have to drive it. Me, I'm like, I don't care. I know the car. I want the color. I know the features. Drop it off at my front door. That would be fantastic, right? That's a generational difference. Um, I think more and more people will do it. I think, like you said, vacation rentals, it's been done for a while, but also uh, investors, if you work with any investors out of the area, out of the country, they've been purchasing sight unseen forever. As long as the numbers work, um, they were able to do an inspection. Um, and keep in mind, we can, you know, a lot different parts of the state, people are getting it in contract. And I get we have upstate and downstate different meanings of getting it in contract. They're getting it in contract and then there still could be a contingency in there that the buyer can walk through the property within a certain amount of time with an unaccompanied showing but that's after there's a deposit after contracts are signed after an inspection is done right 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 and then they the buyer and seller can get together you're not involved with that the attorneys can even coordinate it is more than likely what they're going to be doing downstate the buyer walks through they're cool with it uh, but i can tell you i have a closing what's today I think it's on Tuesday. I have to coordinate a final walkthrough for. I listed it on Easter Sunday. We had an offer on Tuesday. Inspection was done on Wednesday. That buyer is closing and has never seen that property in person. He walked around the outside. Okay, he, he knows the neighborhood because he lives there. But he saw the opportunity because he was an FHA buyer that, that needed concessions. And he actually left the market because he had lost so many multiple offer situations. Right. So think about the opportunities. If you have somebody that needs grant money, that needs concessions, that needs where it would be tough for them to to uh, be competitive in that strong seller's market. Now is the time to pick up the phone and go, hey, there's a great opportunity here. Right. So see what the positives are with the market rather than, you know, what our challenges are. The only thing is, in my area, 84 percent of the houses are listed for a million dollars or more. 
I'm wondering yeah. if mentality is going to be a little bit different for that type of a purchaser. No, uh, my experience has been that type of purchaser is less emotionally involved in, it's just a thing, right? If I can afford a million dollar property, I have lots of things and I don't have any emotional contact or connection to it. That's been my experience as I talk with many agents, even in through the city, through Manhattan, Brooklyn, right. you know, where are you? Like, where are you, like, Philip? Right here. No, where are you? What, 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 um, in Great Neck. Great Neck. Yeah. So it's like, I have found yeah. that the higher the price point, it's us that we go, it's a million dollars, right? And then they go, yeah, it's a million bucks. You know, I just bought this car. I bust about, it's just a thing, right? I mean, how can I really, I don't know what 6,000 square feet feels like, right? It's like, okay, that's a number that I created in my head. I don't need that much space for them. It's just a, I think for them, there is less of an, an emotional um, connection, Phil. And I think it's, it's us that brings it into the transaction sometimes. Because if you look at commercial purchasers, they buy 25, 50, 100. They don't have to, it's like looking at it. Does it work? Yes. Okay, I'm good. I got things to do. I'm busy. I'm an exec. Yeah, commercial is a little bit different than, than your Yeah, yeah. It's a bit yeah, yeah, no, I agree. But I, I just, as I think it's, you know, again, some of this we bring into it rather than saying like, hey, guess what? That, that $1.5 million house, you might be able to get it for $1.4 now because there's less people looking. You're not gonna be able to see it until we get in the contract, you put your deposit down, but you want a deal, don't you? And they're gonna go, yeah, yeah, I love deals, right? Because it appeals to the larceny in everybody's soul, if you will. I feel comfortable. I just wanna make the seller and buyer comfortable. Well, Phil, I have some million dollar properties here in the Rochester area that I'd love to show you. You know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if we showed you what a million dollars went for in Rochester, you would flip your lid. <laughs> It's, a, it's, it's really in the state. What you can buy here, you can. It's a quarter of the price in Georgia where my sisters live. A quarter. Yeah. Of yeah. I same with Rochester. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm here for you guys again. Um, I'll put my. It's Jman at jmanseminars.com. Please don't. I'm not your tech support. I mean, <laughs> and with that, but um, George, could you put the NYSAR tech support number, please, in the chat? Uh, you guys should call that, save it in your number. It's really a, it, it's a member benefit that you're, you have because you're a member. So why not use it? Um, I can't help you with what, what Zoom account you should get and stuff like that. But if you have any questions, just shoot me a message on Facebook or an email, jman at jmanseminars.com. Uh, I'd be happy to help. We've gone over just because of the questions, but my promise to you is to always be here as long as I need to, uh, to answer any questions. Okay. And on behalf of NYSAR, thanks a million for doing this today. It was great for Thank everyone, you. I'm sure. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank My you pleasure. Presentation. Take care. Take care, everybody. Thank Have a good you. weekend. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night.